Okay. So would anyone uh, like to begin with the word of prayer? Sure, Pastor. Go ahead, Mangi. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this time this morning. We pray, Father, to you. Your Holy Spirit will be with us and we will lead and guide us, Lord, and teach us further. So that what we hear today, Lord, will be a fruit in our lives, Lord, and that our lives will be more prophetic and will be people who are led by you, Lord. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. Okay, so we have been, uh, yes, good morning once again, everyone. We have been, um, you know, studying about the prophetic. And in the last class, we discussed about dreams and how one can go about understanding what the dreams mean. And today we will uh, continue with some of the um, concluding chapters in this publication. Uh, but then I also thought we could have a time of just sharing our uh, dreams and then you know maybe uh, a little bit of time to pray and uh, ask god to speak to us okay so uh i let me see i think some of the students haven't joined yet so it'll be good to do those sessions only when everyone is here okay all right, so let me cover one chapter then, and then uh, we'll come back to you know discussing our dreams and maybe taking some time to pray and release prophetic words. So uh, we've completed chapter 11. Chapter 12 uh, is about ministering prophetically. There are different levels of prophetic ministry, which we've already understood. We begin as a prophesying believer. There are some who have the grace for a prophetic ministry. And we've seen that there are people whom God has called into the prophetic office. So the ability to hear from God um, uh, is with everyone, but the, the degree which you know uh, or the level at which god ministers to each uh, under each grace is different uh, so one of the uh, good things good practices for us to have is uh, to just trust god with the grace and the ability and continue to serve god don't worry too much about recognizing where you are at uh, or rather uh, where god wants you to be so god will begin to unfold that and when god does reveal you know that okay you are called to be in the prophetic office or something like that then don't try to uh, push your way into that uh, title so as we've discussed earlier when we continue to do uh, god's work faithfully and use the grace of the prophetic uh, uh, you know the prophetic grace use the prophetic anointing uh, in alignment to uh, the uh, the you know like the level where god wants us to be people will also recognize it and eventually you know if we are called into the prophetic office then people will know that okay so and so is called into the prophetic office so that way it's very uh, uh, helpful to just keep doing what God has called us and uh, not to be in a hurry to uh, tag ourselves as prophet so and so or you know with with titles like that so that's uh, something now ministering a prophetic word to a congregation now this is applicable especially for those who are uh, uh, traveling ministers because uh, see uh, for for us who are serving in the local congregation many of us are prophesying as believers so it can be during the prayer times it can be during uh, you know uh, uh, other other moments as well when you are serving in church you have a word from god and you just share it with with somebody so that's uh, that's all right but when we are ministering to a large congregation uh, if we are in the leadership that happens or if we are traveling out someplace you know, 
that also happens. Somebody has invited us to a conference or a, a church service and we are ministering there and you get a word from God. So how do you do it? What is the right way of doing this? We have to understand who the message is for. It could be for the entire congregation or it could be for a smaller group of individuals or it can simply be for a particular individual. So. Um, we have to recognize that and then we have to see you know if there are uh, some sort of uh, qualifiers for the people to whom this applies you know if it is for uh, let's say the worship team is it for all the worship team or is it just for the the musicians is it for people who have attended a particular uh, course and recently graduated so what are the qualifiers you have to figure out you know who is the audience then uh, when should they be told should they be told in the middle of the service or should they be told at the end of the service then we also must uh, think about uh, is it okay to speak this word publicly or uh, should we just call for a meeting post service and then deliver the word to the people uh, and we can also think, you know, depending on the uh, word of God, let's say if it is a word uh, that is encouraging in nature, something that says, you know, God uh, sees your prayers and God is going to answer them. Now that I think it should be OK to just go ahead and share it. Uh, but if there is another word like uh, God is calling you to, uh, uh, you know, like a a traveling missionary kind of a ministry now this word can be life changing uh, in the sense that the individual who is planted in the church will suddenly have to make a decision to step out and go travel around so uh, it will be good to submit that prophecy to the leader otherwise you know we prophesy and we go but afterwards, the leader of the church is the one who has to deal with the, uh, uh, you know, the things that come with that prophecy. Now, that young person uh, would would uh, make a decision, maybe quit their job and work on their finances. Maybe they were just married. You know, they're already in a, in a, uh, they, they're having a change in their personal life and now travel. So you see the application, the implication is completely at another level. So it's better when there is a word of this kind to submit it to the pastor. And by submitting it to the pastor, we simply mean we share it with the pastor. Pastor, I was praying for so-and-so. I'm just using a name. Okay, I was praying for Luke. And I sense that uh, God is going to take him uh, to the nations of the world. And he will be traveling. So you kind of give it over to the pastor. The pastor knows about Luke. You know, and the pastor can advise, counsel, and guide Luke. Even if that's what God is going to do, um, a God, uh, I mean, the, the pastor is a better person to know whether, uh, hey, okay, correct. You know, what you're hearing from God is right. Now that pastor may say, okay, you know, go ahead. You can tell Luke about this and uh, uh, yeah, just pray with him. So that should be fine. Or let's say uh, it's a word that you sense you have to share publicly. And it's a significant, important word again. It would be good to share with the pastor first and then to go ahead and declare it to the congregation or to certain individuals. The, the problem happens when, uh, you know, one just goes ahead with all these very important prophecies and just says they are gone. But then the leaders of the church are the ones who are there and they have to deal with, uh, you know, uh, things that happen. So just bear in mind just bear in mind that we have to contribute to what god is doing in a local church and not disrupt it in any way so even when it comes to prophetic anointing prophetic ministry uh, in another church uh, we are going someplace so we have to strengthen them and we we must serve in such a way that it benefits that local congregation okay so uh, we can bear that in mind then calling people out in a service 
but this happens sometimes you know god uh, puts it on our minds to call out uh, certain people and i mean i've been in services like that and uh, uh, sometimes i've been called out sometimes uh, you know i've seen others being called out uh, it has its place okay uh, there are times when god wants somebody's attention so uh, he might prompt us to just call out in the middle of the service but we have to be sure that god is prompting us to do something like that okay so it's okay to do that uh, and uh, you know uh, if you've seen uh, recently i i i've come across some ministries where people do this okay uh, shawn bowls and uh, and ministers like that they call out people and you know they share details uh, up to even you know their uh, not all the digits but uh, their phone number to a large extent things like that because you see it's just revealing that the prophetic anointing can you know can uh, reveal can reveal many things about an individual and of course as god is revealing to the to the person the person cannot know everything uh, so there is a place for this and god gets people's attention and uh, you know maybe that's when they will say oh okay god is talking to me so uh, it's fine but we have to be sensitive to the uh, the entire setup we have to be sensitive to the culture maybe in some uh, settings it it may be embarrassing for the people if you call out their name in the middle of the service and say something about them they'd be like why did this pastor do this he could have just told me later so uh sensitivity is what is important a sensitivity uh to the spirit of god sensitivity to the particular uh people group that we are ministering to so just uh we have to just ensure that we are not humiliating people in in any way or you know uh, or you know sometimes if it's a word of correction uh it's it becomes really uh, I, i mean it's very unpleasant because here is a minister who has come and they don't know people in the congregation and they just call out people and they start accusing okay god says this 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 about you and it how does that build up the person or the congregation it actually doesn't so we have to be uh, very very careful particularly when calling out people in the middle of the uh, program whatever program is going on okay um yeah while delivering personal prophecy again we would encourage that uh, you submit the prophecy to ideally if it's a big prophecy something about changing things in a person's life submit it to the leader and then uh, while even sharing it with the person you can encourage them and say you test it out you know i sense that god is saying he is going to uh, you know you're going to lead a church in a foreign country um but pray about it and see what see how god leads you see if you can get a confirmation you know when you put it like that what happens is the person is now open to judging your prophecy the person can pray it through find counsel think plan uh, and all that and uh, you know receive further guidance so that they can do what god wants them to do in a wise way they don't feel pressured that okay i have to go to a foreign country now and i have to uh, you know serve god like this there is no choice we are not leaving them uh, in in that kind of a um, situation so just bear in mind that you must allow them the opportunity to judge the word that you are giving them okay now when it comes to ministering to political leaders uh again god uses uh, people especially those who are in the prophetic office to speak to leaders uh, there are some things that we can bear in mind one is that we must not flatter you know there tends to be this uh inclination to make that leader look good or big or great and we come up with you know words uh to to uh even while we're talking or let's say when we are releasing a prophetic word you know uh, god has chosen you you are the signet ring of the lord something something like so what happens is if it's from the lord it's all great but just because a person is a leader uh 
with from our own minds or from our flesh if we just put in throw in some words to you know just uh, make that leader feel better about himself or herself that's not what god would want us to do and uh, in some ways the reason why people may tend to flatter someone in a high position is favors you know we might get some favor who knows if i have to purchase my land church uh, land then this uh, this minister might be the one who moves the paper uh, for us you know like quickly so favors is the reason why people might want to uh, give a uh, I mean, you know, give a political leader a good prophetic word uh, and all that. But you know, we have to be careful. We are not here to do our um, our thing, but we are here to carefully hear from God and do what He wants us to do. So we have to be um, uh, careful. Then, uh, do not compromise. Okay? Don't compromise. God will reveal certain things, and we have to be true to that. So some things may be unpleasant, but that's okay. We are hearing from God and we are sharing it to this uh, so-called great political leader. So remember to share the truth in love. Then speak with wisdom. Now, when it comes to difficult situations, maybe it's about correcting a person in authority. Uh, we know that we can't just go, go about rebuking the leader and say, Mm. Uh, thus says the Lord, uh, you, you are a thief, you know, you are a liar. You, you, we can't do that. Instead, if we look at the example of Nathan, Nathan uh, was a prophet used to minister to David, the king at, at the time. And so we know when David sinned with Bathsheba, he uh, murdered uh, uh, her husband. The way Nathan brought it out, it was so wise, you know, and so God is able to provide that wisdom. So in this case, Nathan narrated a story about uh, a rich man who murdered a, a poor, uh, a, you know, a, a poor man, a poor man's Eve, I think. So uh, things like that. So when he started narrating this incident, David was infuriated and he said who is this person you know who who is this rich person who was so inconsiderate you know we have to punish that person so then nathan says it's you you are the one you know you did this and all that so uh, thank god you know david's response was very positive uh, he said okay i have sinned against god David was humble enough to acknowledge uh, his, uh, you know, his his uh, mistake. So that's the way Nathan brought it out. And so when we are ministering to political leaders and we come across correct words of correction, uh, it can be very tricky how we share it with uh, that particular individual. So uh, bear that in mind. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, talking about favors. Um, where, when we minister to political leaders, sometimes we can have the tendency just because we we know that the prophetic anointing is flowing through us. Uh, the tendency could be that I have to find favor. So any political leader we meet, we are like, okay, I'll give you a prophetic word. And if there is a good prophetic word, then obviously they will they will have that sense of oh so and so is really hearing from god and how can i help you brother and how can i help you sister so you see the 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 gift is pure what god is doing is pure right through our lives but our intentions are not correct uh, so it's all about the matter of the heart it's about our reality check within and ask ourselves the question yeah the gift is flowing but what are my what what am i trying to do what is my motivation okay so when we are looking for favor with uh, you know people in authority uh, that's not the right motivation okay so ju to just be cautious uh, about all these things would really really help okay now uh, let me quickly look at the next chapter here and then we'll go back to chapter 11 and discuss some more uh, the power of prophetic themes and i've been saying this uh, from the beginning that it would be good if people minister in a team 
okay uh, and not just um, as only one person you know, sharing a prophetic word the reason as we saw in first corinthians 14 uh, when we share others are able to judge the prophetic word okay so that's that's uh, helpful in latching on to a very accurate word uh, even in the new testament we find that people served in teams when the church of antioch was uh, uh you know it was established a set of prophets went from the church of jerusalem to the church of antioch so there's a team okay, not just one individual but a team of people who came then we also read that um uh, there were leaders, elders who ministered prophetically over Timothy, and Timothy was called to, um, uh, you know, serve as a pastor of, of one of the largest churches that Paul planted. So there was a team that prayed over him, you know, imparting the gifts of the Spirit and you know speaking to him prophetically and all that. So we see that there is a place for more than one person to minister prophetically so what are the advantages it's a double confirmation so when god puts the same word in the hearts of two or three people then there is greater surety that oh this is what god wants me to do so double confirmation is a result of that uh, pieces of a puzzle now we said that we see in part we prophesy in part and as uh, let's say three people are prophesying over an individual it could so happen that everyone is prophesying about the same thing maybe the career of that individual and each one brings out a revelation which is like a piece of the puzzle so there is greater clarity when more than one person prophesies so pieces of the puzzle uh, you know help us find the complete picture then it's easy to stir up the gift so by this we mean that the anointing rests upon all these people and so you could sense an ease in the flow of the anointing you probably uh, if i may use the word pick up you you or sense uh words from god a lot faster and easier now don't ask me how this happens technically i don't know but just that the anointing rests on everyone and so the flow is better faster easier okay for for some reason so uh, that happens so it's easy to in other words stir up the gift because everyone else is prophesying i'm stirred up too prophesy then checks and balances uh, where if at all a prophetic word is out of place somebody can call foul or somebody can say hey what are you saying you know that that's not the thing uh, maybe what the, maybe the interpretation is this so uh, there are people to give their inputs and <coughs> correct us if we are not aligned to uh, what exactly god is trying to say then uh, excuse me there is uh, also the advantage of corporate covering uh, by which you simply mean that there is a leadership uh, that oversees uh, guides uh, and uh, uh, instructs you know the the uh, set of prophets so again the, when when this oversight is available there are lesser chances for error and uh, there is a lesser chance for you know uh, also sometimes you have prophetic words that are influenced if people are not careful uh, influenced by demon spirits and uh, you know doctrines of demons and things like that but uh, in the in when there is oversight of a leadership who are who are probably more well versed and experienced in the flow of the prophetic they can guide the teams and say hey you know this is not scriptural or um, uh, come on you know we have to do it this way the delivery is not um, really um, done in a respectful way let's let's make it better so uh, there is a, a better way in which the teams can actually flow when there is oversight so there can be different kinds of teams prophetic teams you can have uh, prayer teams where two or three people pray 
over others together. We can have uh, prophetic evangelism themes. So we did this. Uh, we just went out on the streets and we uh, prayed. We went out um, and, you know, with our congregation, some people from from the congregation. And when we had our Bible college in campus, we generally uh, or do things like this. So we took the Bible college students. We went to certain areas and uh, we had tracts with us and, you know, Bibles and things like that. And we would just go and pray. And as we sense what the Lord is saying. So I still remember I uh, was walking uh, near a bus stop and I saw this girl coming and I just sensed that, hey, I need to talk to her. And I took a lot of courage and I said, hey, you have a moment. I just thought I would talk to you. So she said, yeah, sure. And uh, then I said, OK, uh, so I believe in Jesus and I pray for people. If it's OK with you, can I pray for you? And she said, yes, of course. And uh, right there you know, very close to the bus stop. Nobody was there. But I just prayed and I could see these dark clouds coming over her. And, uh, you know, I could see some internal struggle and all. So then after praying, I I mean, very quickly, I, in a simple way, I prayed. And then I just asked her, uh, uh, "Can I, when I was praying for you, uh, this is what I saw. She was literally in tears. She was like, how do you know? And this is what is going on at home. And... Uh, you know, and then I just added, I said, okay, you know what, God cares for you and uh, God loves you. He wants a good future for you and all. And she was like in tears and we had those books, Don't Lose Hope, APC publication, some tracts. I said, if you don't mind, can I give this to you? And then I just shared, you know, we have our services in these places. If you would like to know more, you're most welcome to drop by. So you know the, these evangelism teams and it's really exciting like a couple of times things like this have happened once we had uh, a person who had pain in the ankle and i don't remember exactly when you know some mcdonald's or something so oh, one of our team members uh, asked that person can i pray for you can i pray for the ankle and uh, the pain left you know so it's it's really uh, very exciting because you can flow in the prophetic anywhere everywhere um and uh, you could minister to people. Like maybe you're just walking in the park and you sense, pray for so-and-so. Just pray and say, Lord, what are you saying? God might reveal something, right? And, and uh, that way we are even able to see souls one for the kingdom. So just, just uh, be open. Just be open. And then prophetic worship teams, we've talked so much about it. You hear from God as you're worshiping. So the music, the songs, the choice of songs, um, the words, you, know, you flow in, in tune with what the spirit is doing. And that becomes a blessing to the people. Prophetic creative teams, you know, nowadays there's so, so much of this happening. There are artists who paint prophetic paintings. I've heard testimonies in some churches, they even paint on the stage. So they have the section where you paint and you just paint what God is showing you. So I remember someone sharing, there was a girl, she was making this painting and someone who came in, they could so relate to what she was painting and, you know, God ministered to their hearts or, um, you know, uh, you, you're you giving, if you're the kind who, you know, uh, paint or do some uh, artistic work, you gift people on their birthdays, you could just pray and say, Lord, what gift do you want me to give them? And just be creative and do that for all you know. We're not saying thus says the Lord, but what we are doing is prophetic or you want to bless somebody right in 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 some way maybe write a poem or a or a, a, some story uh, you know children's stories maybe your nephew niece you write this beautiful uh, story for them it's prophetic they don't know it's prophetic but creativity right by led by the prophetic anointing dance there are times uh, and I, I think uh, many of you know maybe in your churches you already have people who dance um, so led by the the spirit and there's so much power in that so there's a release of god's uh, um, you know power to break through break chains and all when people are dancing so there is place for all kinds of creative expressions of the prophetic anointing and we must encourage that that but again you know we can we can also uh, guide it in such a way that it does not disrupt 
or what God is doing, but it kind of flows together with what God is doing. Then prophetic marketplace teams, uh, this would be in the workplace setting where you have people who hear from God. You know, they uh, they lead and guide in, in a business or it could be the area of entertainment and you realize, OK, you know, what what topics should we address? And uh, maybe it, it's about uh, moral principles. You want to put it across and uh, you, you want to do it in a creative way. It's in entertainment. You know, people people are spending money and time and they will watch what you're producing. But at the end of the day, it's it's imparting something. It's imparting values into people's lives. But you're being led by God to do things like that. Maybe come up with movies. Um, so there's no there's no limit to be prophetic politics definitely politics is one area because you you and i can hear from god okay god what does this uh, region need uh, or what are the what are the policies that we must focus on what's coming uh, in in the economy so we can hear from god it's like joseph you know, joseph he uh, interpreted the dream of uh, pharaoh and he also gave a solution and he said okay the first seven years of plenty, how about we gather everything and the next seven years of uh, lack, famine, we will be able to use what we have gathered well. So solutions, right? So he led the people in that way. So politician, every sphere can be influenced uh, through the prophetic, prophetic city transformation uh, teams. So this is basically a strategizing um, for it's more apostolic. You you kind of touch communities, large sections of people, uh, and uh, you know there is a mighty transformation. Okay, through uh, whatever we we um, do. So things like that. It can all be done and uh, can have dynamic results. Uh, and especially at a time like this when we are trusting the Lord for a mighty harvest of souls um, uh, in, into His kingdom. So prophetic teams are really helpful. OK, so let me stop here. And I was telling everyone before uh, the class began that we can have a little bit of a practice session today. Um, and uh, next class, hopefully, I will be able to complete understanding the prophetic. And we will move on to uh, the apostolic Okay, in the uh, either next week or the week after so for now uh how about we start with uh sharing dreams uh, and yesterday that's what we were doing i think somebody wanted to share and i stopped them so if you want to share a dream and its interpretation that would be good and after that we will go into a time of ministering prophetically okay so uh yeah the time is open Uh, yes, yes, say, please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Um, so um, back in 2019, I changed cities. And before then, there was a particular minister I was listening to for a long time. His teachings were quite deep. Um, so I had a dream. And in that dream, he gave me communion. He just gave me the bread to eat. Uh, I didn't really, really understand the, the meaning of the dream in to uh, totally, basically, until later on within the church I, I, I um, attend, I realized that um, what the Lord wanted me to contribute alongside with every other person was his word and his truth on a deeper level. So that dream was just saying take the teaching or uh, take teaching very seriously and um, do everything to bring God's word to his people but that was the significance of the truth yeah thank you thank you say thank you for sharing that yeah that's great um, you know God saying something and then helping you understand what it means so that you can strengthen yourself spiritually. Anyone else uh, would you like to share briefly? 
a dream that you've had and what interpretation you got out of it? Can I? Yes, yes, Kennedy. Uh, before I joined the APC, I met my brother's friend. And uh, he requested me, why are you down? Can I pray for you? Uh, I can see God opening a way for you to do some studies in theology. So I told him, no, I've been looking for that, but due to cost issues, I couldn't really focus how to do that. He just told me, have faith, let me pray for you. It's coming. Then uh, out of nowhere, I had a dream. I was traveling. Then I was in a group of people. I don't know what you are doing. Like you are studying the word, then the dream just went off. The second day again, he called me, told me, brother, I'm still praying for you. Then uh, one time when I was just going through my, just Googling, going through them. I don't know how even the APC came out. Then now I'll try to connect it. Say, you prayed for me and the things that I saw. I didn't how the college, because I didn't know anybody from APC. I've never, I'd never heard anything about APC. But I thank God it just worked out for me. Thank you. That's yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kennedy. So encouraging to know that God led you to study further uh, and you know now you're able to connect it back to the prayer and the dream so yeah praise god for that thank you for sharing uh, susan i saw you unmute did you want to say something yes ma'am uh, yeah. actually god has spoken many times to me through dreams and visions i just wanted to share two three <laughs> uh, Last uh, week, we had gone out of station and after coming from there, my sister-in-law, she told me that uh, uh, now she'll go home and she will do all the work. I don't like uncleanness uh, and then I will, I have to go outside also to do work. So she was saying and that night I saw in my dream that um, she had come for a prayer meeting. And uh, she was uh, feeling very exhausted and I asked her what happened. She said, I, I don't know. I'm feeling very tired and uh, sick. So I told her husband to take her to hospital. So from there, when he came back, he said, uh, she's no more. She's died. But uh, I got very scared after that. I got up in the morning and I didn't share with her. But uh, I and my husband, we both are just praying for her. I don't know what maybe the meaning behind that and again uh, once i once i saw my dream that uh, uh, one tree was there it was a v-shaped branch and uh, satan uh, one girl was there and she was showing just her leg below her knee and uh, she had worn, worn a anklet and uh, she was shaking her leg and i was going behind her what's this what's this so she stopped near that tree and uh, I saw that vision, but when I got up in the morning, um, I was uh, thinking it was uh, mm, Satan. So that day I went to a house, an uh, unknown house. And there when I went backyard, I saw the same tree over there. And so I uh, shared with that family um, that I saw in my dream a tree like this. And I saw uh, one girl shaking her hair, leg. And with the anklet, I didn't see her whole face, but the only leg. Then that family started telling that um, at night, some devil, uh, they go on the housetop and they start dancing and uh, make noise. And there are some uh, evil spirits and uh, um, their food, food also, which they store in container. Um, suppose they store five kilo of uh, flour wheat floor but uh, after f uh, within two days that floor gets less means something uh, procedure of satanic uh, work is going on in their house so god showed me beforehand so prayerfully i had gone to that uh, family and uh, during this corona also ma'am i saw 
that uh, uh, in one train there are many uh, dead bodies white uh, they are wrapped in white cloth and the uh, train employees are throwing those um, dead bodies anywhere where they like uh, out of the train so within next week news came in tv that many of them found dead bodies floating uh, in river so when i heard that i came to know that it was from god asking me to pray and so like this many a time god leads me thank you yeah thank you thank you sister uh, susan and uh, again it's so encouraging to know that you know, god is revealing things and he's speaking to you and uh, you know you could pray and you've already prayed uh, about what he shared uh, and also like a sense of confidence no because you had already seen a particular home you went there so you could pray for the deliverance of that home confidently so you know god does these things now why does he choose to reveal uh, certain things over others we don't know and uh, whatever god thinks is important is what he would reveal to us so okay we have uh, about 10 minutes now what we will do is we will pray and we will ask god for a release of words a release of words uh, so yeah mm, okay uh, we uh, let's let's try this uh, what we can do is uh, maybe one of you uh, you can just uh, become a volunteer you say that okay i am a volunteer so if any one can volunteer i can pray and uh, you know let's see what god would speak to that person so we can do that first and then we can all pray together okay mangi has become the volunteer great okay say you were a second late so we'll give that uh, volunteer position to mangi okay mangi let's pray i'll pray f- for you and i'll see if if at all god uh, has a word for you and uh, the way we said right uh, in a, when we are together there's a better like we can see a flow of the prophetic so i encourage you also to please pray uh, just pray in the spirit okay everyone pray in the spirit wherever you are okay so mangi i'll just uh, start saying whatever i sense you can correct me if i'm if i'm wrong okay so um i just uh, sense that uh, you know like you are really praying for uh, god's anointing uh, over you and uh, you are seeking god for that um in a very intentional way um okay uh, d- does this make sense does it make sense to you at this point in time is it specific yes it does yes okay. it does pastor okay great great uh, and also i i uh, sense that there is um, a season of your life where you have experienced a mighty outpouring of the holy spirit um i mean it was like a highlight of your spiritual walk with god and uh, that's like your reference point and in a in a way you're looking at that and you're saying god um i know i've been there i have i have tasted it uh, but right now it's not it's not like that uh, but i would like to have that back okay so th- does that make sense i yes 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 pastor uh 
because uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't make sense because mm -hmm. uh, my walk with God did mm -hmm. it really go down, but my experience, my closeness with, with Him, I couldn't mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. yeah more okay. yeah it's like I need yeah, I need to to get close to Him. You need to yeah close mm -hmm. to Him, and He need to get close to me too. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I want more of Him. Yes. Yeah. I, sure, I, 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 sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just uh, pray for you, Mangi. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for, Lord, uh, your word that you have revealed. And Father, we pray a blessing over Mangi. We pray, God, that, uh, Lord, you will fill him to overflowing. Father, we pray for the fullness of the Godhead to manifest in his being in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for times of refreshing to overtake him, O oh God. That Lord, the uh, as your word says, oh God, the um, the latter shall be greater than the former. Lord, we declare it: the latter shall be greater than the former. We pray for an increase of grace, anointing, wisdom uh, over his life in the name of Jesus. And God, we we pray, God, we pray that you will will. Um, Lord, reposition him, Lord, at greater heights, Lord, uh, so that, Lord, he can he can serve you. And, Father, he can also enjoy your presence and delight in it, Lord. We thank you. We, we worship you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, Pastor. Sure, 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 Mangi. Okay, uh, I mean, I wish we had more time because, you know, sometimes we do this for a while and it's uh, amazing to see how God ministers. Okay, uh, just four more minutes left. So I'm wondering, uh, okay, uh, what do we do now? Okay, yes, so Kennedy, you want to say something? Uh, you're on mute, Kennedy. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah. a side question. Like what we've done. Uh -huh. How different? How different is it from something like telepathy? Okay. Yeah. Very good question. Right. Very good question. So, uh, you see, uh, there are, as we've discussed, right? Like man is um, a tripartite being. You have a spirit. You have soul and you have the body. Now, what we are doing now, the prophetic anointing, it's a release from the spirit. So from the spirit man, that's the origin. And the source is God. Now, if, when you look at the new age, the occult and, and you know, them ministering, uh, or I don't know if you call it ministering, but yeah, getting, uh, picking up something. The, again, that would be from the spirit, but the source is, you know, um, the satanic kingdom. Now, things like telepathy, I think it's more soulish, uh, soulish realm, uh, Kennedy. Okay, so that's what we would attribute it to the soulish realm. Okay, I think maybe because of time, we can discuss it later. <laughs> no problem. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. you see, yeah, good, good question. Also, you know, you we have questions sometimes that arise. Uh, whatever so and so said, you know, it could be a guess. It could be a calculated guess. It could be see because we are we are also very psychological beings. We can we can make an assessment when I look at let's say. I'm just giving an example. Somebody comes, they look tired, they look sad. I can make a mental calculation and say, oh, maybe she's going through a hard time. And maybe I can just say, uh, you know, God will, uh, you are going through a hard time. God will encourage you. It's coming from a very psychological, um, you know, uh, that that's the place from where it's coming. That's not prophecy. That's not prophecy. So prophecy is, from the spirit. Now I can I can tell you. Let me quickly explain the process. What happened to Mangi, and let's see if we can continue a practice session. So what I saw for Mangi is I saw a I saw a a wine glass. Okay, I saw a wine glass, uh, and the wine glass had wine in it. Uh, so I was wondering, like, what am I seeing? What is this? And then what happened is the wine glass. You know, it was pointed this way, but it kind of became flat. 
it became flat and there was no wine in it so then i said okay spirit of god like what is it you know wine can mean so many things communion uh, forgiveness of sins new covenant the blood of the new so i'm just thinking and i'm praying lord what does it mean so the wine is the anointing okay so that's where i i didn't tell mangi uh, mangi i'm seeing a cup and i'm seeing wine in it uh, you know none of that so i got the interpretation i was like okay the anointing at some point there was he was experiencing the anointing but now it's not there but also the kind of cup that i saw it was it was looking to heaven so that's why i said what i said i said you are asking god for the anointing and uh, you're seeking for it and you know you, so that's my way of putting it where did i pick it up <laughs> i don't know anything about mangi but i saw a picture i interpreted the picture that's what happened okay so uh, that's how it is um shrikumar we run out of time is, is that a, a quick question i just want to confirm what you saw for mangi oh okay because so, uh, okay. i so i just had a similar not a similar vision but i saw a ladder for him and um, in uh, some part of the ladder he actually stuck i was actually wondering that what exactly it is then i saw a dark cloud is trying to push him back but he is actually trying to, he's he's putting his effort to climb further but it is not happening and uh, like somewhere uh, you know he's actually trying with this like he's putting his whole effort to climb 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 but it's not happening but later i saw that there is a help is given to him and he could able to uh, move further so that was the vision which i had so when you are sharing these things i understood that what you saw and what god shown me uh, we are on the same page thank you pastor thank you yeah praise god praise god so you know god is saying the same thing so that's like a double confirmation coming from two people who don't know mangi okay so that's how that's how it works kennedy uh, definitely not tele you know telepathy in this case because i just interpreted what i saw all right uh, okay rose uh, says uh, stretch it out and uh, just now staircase oh okay so for mangi that's a thing and say he says and you use the word of god as your boundary to interpret yes so you see a symbol and you use the word to interpret it okay so with that let's close class we'll come back we'll have a practice session so please pray through the week and uh, let me know you know if you see a dream or if you hear from god uh, through the week but we will have a practice session in the next uh, week Okay, so let's close now. Uh, Susan, can you just pray like a quick prayer, if you don't mind? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful day you have given us. Thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord. It's only because of your grace we are here, Lord Jesus. And thank you for this platform, Lord, so that we can learn many more things from you, Lord. Lord Jesus, you open our hearts and understanding and wisdom, Lord Jesus. Help us to understand everything, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, these days, Lord, when we are learning about this prophetic apostolic ministry, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, to move in that area, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you open our mind. Lord, open our heart to understand, Lord Jesus, your um, uh, whatever you have kept for us, Lord Jesus. Help us to understand this, Lord. And take us through this spiritual realm, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity, Lord Jesus. You have given us in our lives, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everyone doesn't get it, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity for me and for all my classmates. And also, uh, thank you for uh, our ma'am, Lord Jesus. Thank you for using her, Lord Jesus, so that uh, she is a channel to us um, teaching about uh, this deep mystery, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Asking in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Amen. Amen. Thank you. and thank you, everyone. Uh, God bless you. Have a great weekend, and we'll uh, connect next Thursday. God bless. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.